Hey everyone, Jacob here from GoodUI. And some time ago, I might have shared this blog post of a successful project we did for Design Lab. And today I wanted to kind of go behind the scenes and actually share some of the kind of concept work that went into this project. Uh, hopefully that inspires you to possibly approach UI concepting and optimization work in a similar way. Quick background on Design Lab. Again, it's a online mentoring school where designers get paired with uh, leading, uh, sorry, leading designers get paired with uh, students. And then they enroll on a bunch of projects together over the course of, um, I believe, four weeks or so. So as a, as a refresher, this project, this redesign, this shift from what they had before towards uh, the new version, uh, when they did some sort of time series analysis, essentially a comparison between before the implementation and after, Design Lab noticed a 49% increase in enrollments. And we know this because they compared both uh, full September, full October, and they also had uh, over a year's worth of data, which clearly uh, shifted upwards from as a result of this uh, particular change. Okay, so anyhow, the approach is, I wanted to share with you this Adobe Illustrator concepting um, canvas, so to say, that was used to determine what kind of changes went into the redesign and maybe what other types of ideas were shifted uh, as, as potential follow-up experiments. And I think this is a kind of a key um, way of thinking about, again, what, what goes into a redesign, what is excluded or postponed. And this type of approach is very much visible in this in this particular layout here, in this in this setup. Um, at a very very high level, what we're doing is this: given whatever is the current version of, of a particular screen or or set of screens, we work towards a best version. Okay, so ultimately want to come up with suggestions, recommendations that have the highest probability of uh, of, of moving the needle, needle and, and, and impacting, um, you know, the primary measure for success. In this case, it's more lead generated uh, for, for these course enrollments. Okay. So you might notice that there's there, there are numerous changes here. And often these kind of changes are referenced with, uh, with these little kind of sections here that also have some sort of numbers associated with them. Um, there's potential certain interactions. What happens if, if, if uh, you know, someone actually clicks or submits a form? What do they see? Uh, how does the sign up state look like? Uh, so little details on, on, the, on the interactions itself. But the key setup is grouping the highest confidence changes on the into, into a single variation and anything we're less certain about anything that is uh, essentially kind of a maybe maybe it'll work maybe it will not work um, all, all those types of ideas um, become test candidates um, in this case, the way we structured this uh, this potential approach is in this in this recommended test, um, we also group that with a, a couple other variations here, variation C and D, for um, just exploring different value propositions. So essentially, like the different headlines, uh, which which by the way we we didn't feel we had very much data or any data whether you know whether it was like kind of this headline or, or some other headline hence this is the reason why um, C and D emerged okay anything we don't know about potential for testing and on the right hand side here you see additional ideas uh, which we kind of just grouped under a second test multi-variation test uh, so anything we're we're have no data or, or no confidence on, um, these become, again, separate things that could be tried. In this case, uh, potentially the removal of a particular tour, um, out of focusing particular fields, um, doing 
multiple course comparisons since this company or this organization offers multiple courses. Uh, so this variant here suggests raising linking to other 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 courses, something we have no data on. Um, hence, again, another variation, another idea to be potentially tested, um, and and so forth. Okay. Whereas in this version, notice uh, all these little references here, they have numbers associated with them. And all these numbers basically mean is, and the key number, of course, as you might have noticed in some other videos, um, is this little evidence <laughs> column here. And essentially a one is corresponding to uh, the existence of uh, at least one highly significant test result that is similar and that has that was positive. And the more tests uh, as such that we have, then these numbers essentially go up or down. For, for negative patterns, these might be also negative numbers, okay? Um, one such thing is empowering headline. So notice that design 101 is a statement of the, describing the thing, the course, and it doesn't carry too much value. Uh, doesn't really empower people uh, or, or, or students into better versions of themselves. And here's an example that we're essentially pulling from goodui.org slash fast forward, one of many patterns, one of 95 patterns so far. And this pattern has been tested five times with across different, all sorts of different websites. Um, rollbar, examine.com. And essentially this is a grouping or netting of, of how often something has won, how often something has lost, and from which we derive this repeatability score. Okay, so we can take this value and would put it into here. Um, I think this was done earlier, and of course, the, the, the Fast Forward project is always constantly evolving actively, we're adding new tests um, since the time of actually designing that. This, this number actually went upwards, I think, from our recent test or so. So, um, yeah, that's how we kind of derived that. Subjective confidence is our own kind of guess. Uh, additional points, if we're feeling like there's a likelihood for uh, for something to be a good idea. We might attribute one point or, or um, zero is pretty, pretty much for like neutral stuff, neutral ideas, okay? And we have a series of all these kind of pattern-based ideas. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much how concepting with a, with a kind of like a leap type of experiment um, how we approach that project like this. So grouping multiple, multiple high confidence, high probability changes all into a single variant. The idea is pretty simple. It's, it's to maximize impact um, by relying on as many things that have worked in the past. Typical recommendation for something like this is usually to go into testing. So notice the A and the B and the suggestion to test this. Um, as mentioned earlier in the um, in the uh, in the video here in the blog post, you actually didn't see an A-B test, you see in a time series comparison. Um, the client was confident enough that they just flipped the switch and made a, made a rollout and did the comparison. Um, again, month to month type of comparison, or sorry, like a full year to two month comparison. Usually recommendation is to A-B test, but uh, yeah, that's what happened in this project. I think uh, the effect was still strong enough to to um, to confirm the uh, validity of this, uh, of this shift. So yeah, that's, um, that's one way of approaching redesigns. And um, yeah, hopefully this was useful. And I'm curious um, how you guys do your redesigns, what your, maybe some of your questions are and um, what you think. So uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Cheers.